See there? Very sensitive around the grid of the 4D32 output tube. So the saga continues at D-Lab with that Viking 1 transmitter. So I woke up this morning and I had this revolution. I thought, you know what? This Viking 1 is acting just like some of the old Gibson and one-off amplifiers that I've worked on in the past that were noisy, okay? So some of the older amps, they would actually use the chassis as common for one side of the six volt filament. And then the other side would be a single wire, kind of doing the old Christmas tree effect, lighting up all the tubes, okay? So a lot of times guys will say, well, can you just put a grounded cord on there to eliminate this noise level I have? And I do it and it actually makes it worse. So if you take a look at a Fender amp, like your typical Deluxe or Princeton, you look at how Fender wired them and they have a twisted pair filament line. And it usually goes at right angles and dives down to each tube. But those filaments are not connected to chassis. And then at the end of the string, they've got 200 ohm resistors from the filament lines to ground to balance it and eliminate that common mode noise. That's what we got going on here, okay? So that type of noise usually affects small signal tubes because the envelopes are so small. So if that filament is in there with current shifts, you'll hear it, okay? It's not so evident on big tubes like the 4D32 or 807s, but the little preamp tubes get plagued by this induced noise and you get to listen to it. All right, so here's what I'm gonna do. I'll obviously test it first, verify the noise is still there. Maybe it's gone. <laughs> and then I have a bench DC power supply. I'm going to raise the filament wires on the 6AU6 and the 6AQ5 tubes since they're in the line with the VFO signal. All right, and I'm gonna put a DC power supply feeding just those tubes. The rest of the radio would continue to be powered by the existing filament circuit. We'll see if the noise goes away. It's gonna be good, let's go. So the Viking one's fired up. Do we have noise? Sure enough. So what the plan is, here's the two tubes, 6AQ5, 6AU6. The green wires are from the wire harness. So the six volt AC comes up, hits a tube, loops over here, hits that one, loops on to the rest of the radio. So I'm gonna break these filament wires. I'm gonna connect the two together so we can just go from here straight on through. And then I'm gonna grab these pins on the two tubes connect a DC power supply and retest. All right, there's my bypass surgery. Filament lines now are bypassing those two tubes and the two red wires you see are going to my power supply. I already have those two tubes fired up, six volts, drawing about an amp and a half of current. Next step, let's fire up the Viking and see if the noise is gone. All right, I'm not seeing any strange fluctuations in the current. The Viking is on. Got a little good luck juice here. And we're still in the VFO position. The VFO is connected. So here we go. I'm going to go over to spot. No noise. Either I'm off frequency. Huh. Huh. That's strange. I got nothing. I must have something wrong. Let me check. All right, yeah, I screwed up. I actually had the receiver at the crystal frequency that was in the radio. Now we're back to the VFO. I'm at 7.2 megahertz. Here's my spot. Guess what? There's still some noise there, but nothing compared to what I had. It's a good sign. So now I'll go ahead and transmit. Hopefully RF doesn't get in here and blow my power supply up. 
see what we can get here. It really reduced the noise. So now I'm going to go ahead, route these wires outside, get the bottom cover on, and let's see if all the noise is gone. We're on to something. All right, so let's transmit in CW. Absolutely no noise, no buzz. Okay. Now I'm going to go over to phone. Now, what's strange is my watt meter over here is going nuts, showing that I'm modulating. I've got mod current up the yin yang, but I have no modulation now. So, yeah, I killed the noise, but I lost my modulation. So, I don't know if this external power supply is somehow interfering with the operation of the radio. So what I'm going to do is return it back to normal. I'm going to check those decoupling caps. Fire it back up and see if my modulation comes back. But right now, it's quiet as can be. So, so the noise is gone. But it's not because I put in that external power supply. Okay, so here's my receiver. There's my spot. Got the bottom cover off. Here we are transmitting. Okay. No buzz. Okay. Full power out. No buzz. But now I've lost modulation. It tries. I see the meter deflecting a little bit, but lost modulation. So, what I believe was going on is when I got in here to put in the DC, I noticed one of the point double O fives on the 6AQ5 tube solder connection looked a little bit flaky. When I went in there to do my little experiment, it actually fell off, okay? So it wasn't soldered. Uh, I didn't see it. I inspected those grounds. You guys are right there, you saw it, but it was obviously not soldered. Soldered that on, the noise is gone. So there's no reason to go any further with that experiment, but now, modulation's gone. Just keeps on going, doesn't it? So the question of the day. Was the noise caused from a defective modulation transformer? Was the arcing in the transformer fooling me, thinking that there is noise somewhere else in the radio? Because now, the noise is gone. I mean, this thing is like crystal clear, but I don't have any modulation. So is this all coincidence? You know, hey, Terry, you got noise, but you got great modulation. Now, guess what, Terry? No modulation and no noise. What do I do now? I don't know. <laughs> Until next time, guys.